No, I have to say a little bit of politics, you know. You will excuse me, this is my job description. But then, just to balance the whole situation, I prepared some stories, short versions, I assure you, um, about how fascinating might be connections between two countries which are at the opposite, the only two opposite poles of the globe. So 2017 has the significance of the 28th year of uninterrupted capitalism. That's a syntax that I created, by the way, so, um, that, but it's interesting. Since the collapse of socialist regime and the success of the very first broadcasted revolution with the Romanian flag having a big hole in the middle. 2017 means also for Romania 62 years since we joined United Nations, 20 years since we joined the Council of Europe, 20 years of uninterrupted strategic partnership with United States, um, and 13 years since adherence to NATO, and 10 years since we become EU member state. For the next foreign policy goal, I hope to count soon on Australia and New Zealand active support for Romanian candidature to the OACD. Romania and Australia established diplomatic relations in 1968, and I'm proud to be appointed as ambassador of Romania to Australia in 2013. Since 2002, we appointed a honorary consul in Victoria um, for more than 10,000 Romanians, and, and this year, we are I'm opening two uh, very first honorary consulates here in w, uh, WA and in South Australia next week. Romania economic growth by uh, 4.8% in 2016, which is a big figure, by the way, for European countries. Don't think at your country. I mean, not Australia. It's a totally different approach in Europe. The highest since 2008 and the third fastest in the EU. And during the first trimester of this year, um, we had the biggest um, uh, economic growth in EU, 5.7, in accordance with uh, 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 International Monetary Fund, not Romanian government. So. Sometimes it's good to, you know, to um, uh, quote some, uh, some um, <clears throat> other non-biased sources, if I may say so. Um, and now the stories. Here comes the stories. A small river of stories. The first one is a historic story. <laughs> this year, we are celebrating 99 years since the Great Union of Romania was fulfilled. During the First World War, Romania joined the Antanta Coalition in 1916. Queen Maria of Romania, Lady here is one of the most fascinated crowning heads, the most extraordinary and independent woman last century, the granddaughter of Queen Victoria and Tsar Alexander II of Russia. She was born in 1875 in Kent, England, so she had no drop of Romanian blood. <laughs> At 17 years old, she married her fiance, Ferdinand of Hohenzollern and Sigmaringen, the crown prince of Romania. Queen Mary is the mother of six children, Carol, Elisabetta, Maria, Nicolae, Irana, and Mircea. In other words, the King Carol II of Romania, the Queen Elizabeth of Greece, Archiduce Ileana of Austria, Queen Maria of Yugoslavia, and Princess Ileana. Fortunately, the little one, Mircea, died quite young. Queen of Romania since 1914, Maria wrote My Country in 1916, and the story of my life with a motto, a quote from Nietzsche, character is destiny. In 1917, during the First World War, Romania has to face the invasion of half of its territory and an epidemic of typhus. Also, the outbreak of the Bolshevik Revolution on its doorstep. Queen Maria did her best to encourage and motivate Romanians, going to the front, caring for the wounded, and acting on behalf of Romanian Red Cross. She was also named the mother of the wounded. Maria was called, however, La Princesse Lontan, the faraway princess, the last romantic since she had such a tumultuous romantic life, after all, it's late Friday, you know. Uh, having long-term relationships with a Romanian aristocrat, Prince Barbu Stirbe, Alexandru Margiroman, a conservative politician, Prince Antoine Vivesco, a Romanian diplomat, what else? And with Viscount Astor, a British politician of American origin. Queen Maria was the first member of a royal family ever accepting to make commercial promotion for cosmetics because she used to have a very good skin, by the way. I understand Romania, she wrote, Romanian aspirations, and I agree with them. I do not belong to any other country than Romania. Queen Maria played a crucial role during the Great War, as well as during the Peace Conference. She advocated in favor of the recognition of the Great Union of Romanians. 
At the end of the First World War, when the big empires collapsed, in 1918, parliamentary bodies, democratically elected in free Romanian provinces, decided on this province's union with the Kingdom of Romania. In Chisinau on April, in Chernowitz on November, and in Alba Iulia on December 1st, 1918, millions of Romanians from Basarabia, Bukovina, and Transylvania declared unanimously the union of these three provinces with the motherland, the Kingdom of Romania. On December 11, 1918, King Ferdinand I, first house, promulgated a decree that approved the Great Union. The Kingdom of Romania doubled in size and in population. The peace treaties with Germany, Bulgaria, Austria, and Hungary recognized the union of all Romanians. The Great Union is a long-cherished national aspiration for unity, the foremost event in Romanian's history of almost 2,500 years old. After the revolution in 1989, the Nation Day of Romania is celebrated every year on December 1st. And this completes my first story. <laughs> but uh, the epilogue, when Queen Maria died in July 1938, she was by far the most loved member of Romanian royal family. Her public appearances were greeted with endless ovations and emotional sincerity. For all, she had been the object of a profound veneration. When they found out about her death, many Romanians felt that a great part of the spiritual force of our country was gone. Her body rests for eternity in Romanian Orthodox Church, Kuta de Argeș, and her heart was buried first in Balci, Bulgaria. After 1940, her heart came back to Romania, currently at her beloved castle in Bran. King Michael I, aged 97, one of the sons of Queen Maria of Romania, was repatriated with the royal family in 1995 in Romania. Uh, he is the last king of our country and the only head of state survivor from the Second World War. Now he's living in Switzerland. He, he has a, um, a bad medical condition and we are all praying for his health. This poster is the most humble sign of gratitude for Romanian heroes and the contribution of the royal family uh, to the Great Union, uh, lest we forget Romanian Great War in the sound of Ireland. Now my second story, it's about uh, the greatest Romanian artist, painter, photographer, the most influential sculptor of the last century. His name is Constantin Brucuș, the patriarch of modern sculpture. Work like a slave, command like a king, create like a god. Uh, he used to say, we celebrated worldwide last year Brucuș, the leading modernist sculptor, but there are many unexpected bridges between Brincouche and Australia and New Zealand. I'm also a credit to New Zealand, so from time to time I have to you know, point it out. Margit Pogani, a Hungarian painter and dancer, met Brincouche in 1909. He called her the immortal mistress. In 1913, Brincouche exposed Miss Pogani's work in the USA. Enormous eyes have sparked controversy. The sculpture was qualified as a freak one. Uh, resembles nothing so much as an egg. Margit emigrated later on in Australia. Three of her paintings are part of the permanent collection at the National Gallery in Victoria, and she is buried, actually, in Melbourne, mm. Victoria. The biggest and latest birds in space by Brancouche, black and white marble, initially commissioned in 1933 for a meditation temple for the Maharaja of Indore, eventually bought by Australia in 1974, and you may admire, admire them in Canberra at the National Gallery of Australia. And in March this year, it was approved a new building in the heart of Melbourne CBD at 295 King Street upon Constantin Brancouche bird uh, in space. As Brancouche said, the birds fill the vault of the sky. Last but not least, in 1930, Brancouche met Vera Moore, a famous Jewish pianist from New Zealand, born in a family with four brothers, seven brothers, all music musicians. Their romance lasted decades. Their love story was, however, kept a uh, secret, resulting in a child, Constantin Brzezuch John Moore, born in September 1934 when Vera was 38 and he was 58. What you can explain. Brzezuch John Moore became a professional photographer at the Crazy Horse in Paris. I know he's still alive. He saw his father only once, but Brzezuch never acknowledged John as his natural heir. The reason what I, why I share with you tonight this story is because this bird in space in camera is considered the most valuable foreign masterpiece in Australia.
No offense, it's not my idea. It, it was uh, the idea, I mean, not only the idea. I was told by Mr. Gerhard Vogt, the director of National Gallery of Australia, so you can check with him. <laughs> <laughs> now, the second part of Romanian creativity story is about an outstanding Western Australian artist of Romanian origin, Mr. Dan Mugurel Borbulescu. I think he's somewhere in the room. Can you please step up and, and join me? Thank you. <coughs> Showcasing here his artist, artistic ongoing project, a series of 38 works entitled Children of My Revolution. Dan Mugurel Borbulescu was born on March 11, 19. 55 in Bucharest, with men is very easy with the year, it's, you know, uh, longer it's better. Uh, Romania, and in September 1989, uh, actually two months before revolution, he emigrated to Perth, Australia. Never stopped drawing, however, stopped drawing, however, he participated in, in various local exhibitions, competitions, art awards. In 2006, Soul for Sale, first solo exhibition organized in a coffee bar. That's interesting. In 2008, Dream of Light, organized by Linton and KR Gallery in Perth. 2009, Outsider Time, the second solo exhibition. 2010, Mix with a Twist, the third exhibition in Perth. In 2011, finalist at Black Swan Art Award for Portrait, winner of the People's Choice Award in 2012, City of Sterling Art Award, Best Work on Paper. Participation and various local and interstate Australian art awards involved with charities donated artworks for the benefit of community by finalist in 2013 at the Black Swan Art Award for Portraiture, many more art awards, a lot, a lot. So my speech will be that way if I will mention everything. Participant with 13 artworks at the second edition of the International Outsider Art Salon in Bucharest, started teaching art classes for adults and children, participating to the first creative festival in Canberra with some, some uh, pieces. My art is a combination of tribal and surrealist art, using extreme detail when presenting my mazes, labyrinths, and intertwined parts reveals my true intention to express a wide range of feelings and emotions. Romanian artist Victor Brauner and his music, mystical paintings, the Japanese with rock prints, primitive art from various continents, Byzantine art, or the writings of Carl Gustav Jung, are also the roots of um, my beginnings in art, said Mugurel. I do consider myself as an outsider artist with an obsession towards fine art, line, and detail. I particularly enjoy trying to give a second chance to various things people throw away because they consider them useless or outdated. This goes with, pe with people too, you know, people, persons. Second chance is always important. We all have the second, the third, the last chance. And this, this project started in 2013, based on a personal study regarding the political propaganda during the last 150 years. It is his strong belief that the art and propaganda are two different things, and one cannot serve the other. He uses particularly unconventional colors, sometimes completely out of order, just like new symbols he made up on the spur of an insolvent creative moment. Indulge your, your eyes and your soul with his work, and thank you very much, Mugure, for being with us today. Thank you.